Hi, Chris. Um, just first of all, um, how much satisfaction, how much relief is it to um, secure your future for, for next season? Yeah, a bit of both. Um, it's kind of been going on in the background anyway, um, kind of relating to my, um, there was an option here in the contract and stuff. So I knew things had kind of been getting sorted behind the scenes, but um, it's out there now. Um, happy to secure it again. Uh, my age, obviously, continuing to, to apply my trade, I think, um, is a real positive and, and a football club, I think, with um, with a lot of potential. So um, I'm really happy to be here for another year. How pleased have you been with your form this season um, in terms of goals, which obviously is your, your priority as a striker, but also what else you bring to the team? Nigel Pearson described you as the best defender at the club at the moment. Um, yeah, I think maybe in reference to kind of set plays and stuff, I, I pride myself on kind of coming back and trying to help the team. But yeah, I, I think I've been fairly satisfied. I think it would be about as far as I would go. I think um, obviously the way that things have gone for the for the team this season um, wasn't the the best case scenario that we envisaged. I think um, as a group. Uh, lots of different kind of reasonings of I guess behind that um, and yeah personally I think I played pretty well I feel like I've been fairly consistent but I would still want more I don't think I've um, I've played the very best that I possibly can um, so hopefully there's there's still more to come yeah are you someone who would ideally like to score 15 20 goals in a season or is, is there more to your game than just the amount of goals that you score no I'd love to <laughs> um, but yeah I think Everyone brings brings something different, I think, don't they? And, and I think my attributes, I, I like to think I can bring other people into the game and, and attempt to kind of make them better, make the players around me kind of um, help us gel um, and, and be a part of a team, really. That's that's kind of, kind of what it is. I want to be part of a successful team. So it's about doing the job that's required. I think as a striker throughout my career, I've, I've always wanted to score goals and try and put myself in those positions over and over. Um, but if you're not, which most strikers uh, go through those kind of periods it's about trying to affect um, the teammates and the opposition in another way and I, I believe there's there's elements to my game that I can do that without scoring but that doesn't mean that I want to score any less and you'll be 34 in in November are you someone who looks to the future and think I can play to a certain age or are you taking it cliched each season as it as it comes um I am indeed yeah uh I don't know. I, I think I've got a few more years left in me yet, but I don't want to try and tempt fate. Uh, I think it's just based on how you feel. I think I've spoken about it a little bit before. I've still got the hunger and the desire and the drive to, to be successful and to, to continue to improve and learn. So I think that's that's half the battle. Uh, also looking after myself very well. I think my, my level of professionalism now, as compared to early on in my career, is, is significantly better. Um, and yeah, I think physically all, all my markers and stuff like uh, my distances, high intensity in games, um, a lot of the stuff that we do in the gym, um, all of that stuff is improving actually, e even at my age. So I, I'm setting personal bests as the season has, has gone on. So I don't see any reason why that can't continue to happen as long as I'm doing everything possible to look after my kind of mind and body. There has been lots to like this season, but... Um post Tuesday where you concede a couple of soft goals describe them set, set pieces can you put can you put your finger on why City are, are struggling to keep the ball out of the back of the net this season um, there's been many factors I think uh, to be honest um, that's what's been so difficult I think once we kind of plug one hole then another one's appeared sometimes so I think um, a huge win that I can see for us would be defending set plays better and I think that's something that um, is very is a very simple concept. I know it's not always easy um, in practice, but it is a very simple concept. Concept, sorry. Um, attack the ball and don't let your man score. So that's something that seems one of the easier routes to kind of to kind of go down in terms of improvements. And yeah, quite frankly, we haven't been good enough. We haven't attacked the ball well enough. Um, stay with our markers. Um, and kind of, I guess, taken the responsibility and dealt with it. We we haven't managed to do that this season, so it's not for want to try. And we've done a lot of work on it, um, spoken about it an awful lot too. So we're hoping that those messages are are heard and and we can start to make improvements there. I think having kind of a group where 
we've got some youngsters. We've also got some players that haven't played at this level um, a, a great deal uh, as well. So it's about kind of those people having another year of experience, I think, and, and learning and understanding the game. And I think as older players and experienced players, we've probably got to do a better job in um, setting those standards and letting people know what their roles are, what the jobs are, um, and, and not and not switching off because that's kind of a simple thing when, when we're talking about set plays is kind of that concentration and stuff. So maybe as, as older players, um, we need to kind of ask ourselves the question and say, are we doing enough to, to help as well? Just finally, we're waiting to see if Antoine may or may not get pulled up by Ghana for the first time. Um, just what's he like to play up front with? And um, have you noticed a, a bit of progress from him, certainly since he returned from his injury? Yeah, for sure. I think he, he's he's really pushed on this season. I think the difference that I can see is he is um, seems a lot more relaxed when he's playing in matches. I think everyone will probably testify the same as what I would do in terms of how good he's been in training, even over the course of last season too. But we didn't always see that replicated in games, I think. And I think that's, as a young player, that's kind of the progression that you have to make. Um, certainly something that I went through, I think, as a young player where you question yourself thinking, why can't I do some of those things in the games is what I'm doing in training. And it takes that little bit of experience and understanding the level and, and stuff. And that comes with games. But he's really, really pushed on this year. And to, to play with him, it makes my job a lot easier. I think he creates space for me. Um, and yeah, uh, uh, my job, I think, is probably to kind of take a few of the hits for him um, and allow him to flourish, um, so to speak. And with the attributes that he's got, as I probably said a few times before, he's he's got everything needed to to um, push on and go as, as high as he possibly wants. That's great you're sticking around. Um, look forward to next season and many more games and goals from you, Chris. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thanks, Richard. Hi, Chris. Hiya. Hi. Is it... Um... The second most starts you've had in your career, and only Bayern has played more minutes than you in the Bristol City team this season. Um, how much is that down to like your professionalism, and do you have to kind of tailor your training to, to kind of manage those minutes? It's tailored for us to, um, to an extent, obviously, by the staff um, in terms of recovery days and stuff after games. Um, and yeah, it is also a case of looking after myself, essentially doing stuff at home, um, Pilates, doing some workouts. I've got a gym at home as well in the garage um, that I go in um, most days, um, a lot of the time before training. So yeah, I think that's that's a, probably a product of that. And also I think probably time to reflect on that a little bit with the injury last season that I had um, and the fact that I didn't want to be, uh, I didn't want that to be the end almost and kind of, be a player as I get older that was prone to injuries and stuff so I think that was a little bit of a wake-up call for me to to really knuckle down and also to the I think the energy um, and, th and enthusiasm that I've shown during the rehab I think has helped me now um, I'm definitely stronger um, and, and fitter and stuff because of that obviously strengthening the hamstrings and, and everything in between and the stuff I've done with with Jill and Dell um, over those few months I think has really stood me in good stead for this season. Is, it, it's, is that what it kind of, sometimes you need a, a, a little step back in order to think ahead in the future and kind of, you know, get your, get your body and your mind focused? Exactly, yeah. I, I'd already started to, to do that anyway, I think, um, quite a bit of time before that. But I think that just kind of, like you said, it gives you a period of reflection. And I knew that any <laughs> too many more of those kind of injuries, obviously wouldn't be ideal especially at my age and kind of the stage of the, my career that I'm at so um, as the old saying goes the best ability is availability I guess so that's um, that's something I kind of prided myself on I think throughout my career anyway but um, certainly as I'm kind of coming to the twilight I guess um, that becomes ever more important especially the recovery side of it I think and that's the case like you said of speaking to people maybe when um, we're not feeling too great after certain games and seeing if we can have a bit more of a rest or kind of tailor the training a little bit to to suit it. But to be honest, I'm out there. I'm out there most days that everyone else is. So I don't take take any extra days off or anything. But um, it's about maybe adjusting that and thinking about the work I'm doing behind the scenes as well to, to keep me in the best shape possible. Congratulations on, on the, the new contract. As, as, um, as a player who's 
retrospect, retrospectively speaking, now he's kind of coming to the end of the season without, a, you know, a plan for the next season. Can that have an impact on on performances? Um, potentially, yeah, I think it can. I think um, it's one of the kind of the the stresses that a player could potentially be going through and. And looking ahead and thinking, oh, I don't know what's happening. Um, that uncertainty, I don't think it's it's great for anyone. So, um, obviously, glad that that's not the case with myself. But yeah, for sure, I think um, I think you see it quite a lot with people that are out of contract ended up having probably quite good season. I don't always think that's an intentional thing. I think that's probably more of a subconscious thing that they they see themselves either out of contract or potentially having to move on and. Um, that gives you that kind of lift, I guess, to, to be like, right, things are, uh, are very, very serious. I don't think anyone would intentionally say, oh, I'm going to wait till the, the last year of my contract just to, to turn up, you know. But you do see that fairly often where people will have kind of a, a peak in performance in those, those last years. And, and like you said, it can also go the other way if you're not able to deal with the pressure of the unknown um, at the end of a season. But I like to think with, with my experience and time in the game, that's kind of something that I've, I've seen happen and probably had happened to me a few times regardless anyway so once you've been in that situation it becomes that bit easier to deal with um so yeah it wasn't really something that, that has bothered me too much i wouldn't say this season yeah, just going back to, to one of richard's questions you said there was um a, a number of factors about why the team are, are struggling to defend set pieces i just wanted to kind of uh, wanted you to kind of elaborate on what those factors were um not getting enough first contacts on the ball, I think, is a massive thing. Um, yeah, as a collective, we need to figure out how to do that more often um, and also stay alive to second balls. But yeah, we've we have allowed people um, without too much resistance um, to get opportunities uh, to head it or whatever it might be on our goal from set plays. So that's frankly not good enough at this level um, uh, we're aware of that um, as a group we've spoken about it like I said many times so sometimes you can talk too much about it but when, when things continue to go wrong then we, we can't just sweep it under the carpet and hope for, for better we need to do something about it and that's about us as a group taking responsibility for which I think we have done um, and I'm hoping that the work that we're doing now will obviously mean that that doesn't continue to happen uh, so yeah, as, as individuals and as a team, we need to really accept the responsibility um, and what it and, and understand what it takes and the, the desire to, to keep the ball out of the net. Quite frankly, it's um, something that we sh all should have inside of us and, and taking that pride. I think sometimes people might think, oh well, it's only a set play or, or it's not that important. It's a huge part of the game, especially uh, in our division. Um, and games are won and lost on it. Promotions are probably won and lost on it. Um, relegations also. So it's something that we need to be um, we need to be aware of um, and ensure that we we maintain our professionalism and concentration uh, when set plays come. Uh, and finally, for me, when a team isn't in in great form, can the international break be a help or or a hindrance? Um. Probably a help, I would say, most of the time. It, it depends. It depends on what work's done. It depends how the group reacts to it. That's all, it's all down to us, really. It's all down to our mindset um, and how we approach it. Whether we're feeling sorry for ourselves um, and we can't deal with the pressure or we choose to front up, deal with it, um, put everything out in the open and apply ourselves as best as we possibly can. That's all, that's all we can do um, and that's what I would be looking at for everyone as a senior player to to kind of take that and accept the responsibility and and show how much you want it essentially that's that's a big part of it I know maybe seems a bit of an old school kind of way of thinking but um, we can talk about tactics or we can talk about um, whatever you like but ultimately as, as players you have to accept the responsibility and do and it's about doing the basics uh, we've got the desire to run to, to stop crosses have we got the desire to put our head on the ball have we got desire to tackle um, I think that's a huge part of it I think when you're not in great form it's easy to look for excuses both as a player as fans as, as staff everybody um, excuses aren't going to do us any good to be perfectly honest with you um, 
So it's about trying to identify what we think we need to improve and, and doing the work, putting the work in. That's all we can do um, between now and the end of the season and and try to um, try to build, I guess, a bit of a platform um, heading into next season. Thanks, Chris. Good luck Saturday. Appreciate that. Thank you. Hi, Chris. Um, one part of the formidable, atta- formidable attacking trio of yourself, um, Antoine and Andy, and we've seen Andy now go to right wing back. Um, how different is that in the team shape and the team? Because obviously Andy has built up a good partnership with Antoine. It's both of them share good goals and assists ratio. Yeah, it's something we've had to adapt to. I think um, when we aren't getting the results as a team, then it's... Uh, it's quite obvious that things will probably change, whether it be shape, whether it be personnel. Um, the manager and the coaching staff are obviously trying to find a formula, I think, to win us games more often than not. And we've obviously had a real terrible inconsistency this season, not being able to put two wins together. So I think that's probably part of the reason is trying to trying to find a way to do that. Um, we obviously managed to, to perform fairly well against Blackburn. Um, we're, we're very resolute. Uh, and we got the win, so that's obviously why he was then selected, I guess, in the same position. But it does change things, but it, it doesn't mean that he can't be part of the attack. So I think you've obviously seen that with the winning goal um, against Blackburn. He was in the box at the back, back stick, and that's what he gives you. He gives you that energy and enthusiasm, um, and he's a great team player, Andy. So I think that's probably why you've seen him in that position, because the manager knows that he can rely on him. The manager knows what he's going to get from him week in, week out, day in, day out. And and we know as players and we trust him. And I think that's that's probably a huge part of the reason why he might be asked to do something like that because of that um, that huge amount of trust. So, yeah, I think he, he's been fantastic this season. Um, not sure if he, he, he would enjoy playing as a right wing back or not, you'd have to ask him, but you would never see it um, in his kind of... Uh, in his mood or anything like that, he doesn't it doesn't really affect him, and and we know we know what he brings. So wh- wherever it be, I think he can contribute positively to the team. And of course, with your new contract now, and um, you've spoken there about the experience part of perhaps when time is running out on someone's contract, and there's still a few players out of contract. This city goes on the wider football landscape. What's your advice? the people into trying to earn those contracts because situation is different for some people but what ultimately what you need to do to earn a contract if you want to stay at football club um try not to think about it too much um i think the uh, the only thing you can do is affect what what you do yourself essentially that's the only that's, and and then what you bring to the team i guess but ultimately it probably comes down to looking at yourself and being um as professional as possible putting in all the work that you possibly can do um, and hoping to bring your best to the game. That's There's not really much more you can control. I think the only way that contracts get sorted out is by doing the business on the pitch, generally, um, unless you've got a huge amount of potential as a young player and you haven't yet played, then obviously that's, that's the case. But even as a young player, you, you've shown the potential in games, um, whether that be in the under 15, 16s, 18s, whatever, at whatever stage you like. So ultimately, your contract is a reward for the job that you've done on the pitch generally. Um, So concentrate on that.